Thank you for joining us this week on BG24 News. I'm Autumn Stevens. This weekend, the Falcons go up against the University of Toledo Rockets in the Battle of I-75. Chase Bachman is in studio to give us a preview of the Falcons' big game against rival Toledo. Chase? Thanks, Autumn. I'm here with BG, BG News, that is, uh, reporter Evan Hayes to talk about the UT-BGSU game. And Evan, some of the things that we were talking about before we came in here about the storyline setting in, Jinx kind of feeling the pressure from those outside forces, whether it be from the boosters, the community. Uh, what are some of the storylines for BG heading into this matchup Saturday? Well, Chase, I think the entire team is really feeling that pressure from the community. It's become... Uh, pretty, it's, it's, it's really mounting for them. They've gone one and four to start the season. We dropped our MAC opener. So this game against uh, Toledo would be a, a good opportunity for them to get back on track as we enter into that final stretch of the MAC schedule. And so some of the other things we were talking about with the team specifically is how their defense has performed. And it's not how uh, defensive coordinator Carl Pellini would like it to be. They're ranked 116th among FBS teams, giving up more than 500 yards per game. What kind of things can they do to slow down that high-octane Rockets offense? Well, it's been a tough year for the BG defense, specifically against the run. And unfortunately, it's not really how you want to play Toledo. They've mm -hmm. obviously been a strong run team since their head coach has been there, mm -hmm. but they're really going to have to work on not getting gapped out, filling spaces, and mm -hmm. finishing plays, finishing drives, and finishing tackles. It's been one of their most uh, glaring weaknesses has been finishing tackles this season. And so one of the things we want to shift to to the offensive side of the ball, Bowling Green has kind of struggled offensively too. They're trying to uh, invigorate that offense. What kind of things can they do to be successful this Saturday? Well, it all kind of leans on the shoulders of uh, sophomore quarterback Jared Dagey. He's been fantastic to start this season. He's got uh, 27 TDs in his last nine games, only seven interceptions. Um, it, it's important for him to really find the short passing game this week. It worked really well against Georgia Tech with Scotty Miller. Mm -hmm. Hopefully those two can compensate for BG's weakness running the ball. Uh, one more thing here. Let's imagine that BGSU gets the upset because they're 20 point underdogs. Uh, what kind of things, uh, wh how does the season go for them if they, if they win? Um, I think this, this game's crucial really as they enter the MAC schedule because as we know, every year anything can happen in the MAC. So moving forward with that, I, it's, it, it, it'll set them up on a great run to finish the, finish the season. All right, well, there you go. Autumn, we'll give it back to you. Thanks, Chase. Thousands of families traveled to campus for some fun with science. Reporter Danielle Kane was there to see what was going on. Science, technology, engineering, mathematics. This is the ninth annual STEM in the Park event at the Perry Fieldhouse. This attracts many people. This event offers learning opportunities for all ages. Companies, programs, and schools put their best foot forward. From robotics to making ice cream, the wide array of activities showed off the spectrum of work in the STEM field. First year attendee Aaron Tokmak enjoyed the activities. Probably my favorite part is the robotics and engineering. Uh, uh, it's one of my favorite things to do is engineering and stuff like that. STEM in the park is a labor of love. To bring together hundreds of groups to campus for one day is a massive undertaking. Organizer Jenna Pollock believes her hard work paid off. Uh, the celebration of learning, of STEM learning. Um, families can come and have um, a great hands-on experience. We have over 175 activity stations for people of all ages to enjoy. We love that kids and adults and grandparents can all learn together and have fun. Hopefully STEM in the Park will have sparked interest to the next generation of scholars. Reporting from BG24 News, I'm Danielle Kane. This was also the first year that the STEM in the Park took flight with the Wood County Air Fair for one large multi-site event. Participants got to experience all aspects of the flight at the Wood County Regional Airport, as well as experience all that STEM in the park had to offer. Over the weekend, the Moore Musical Arts Center hosted the annual or Orchard Guitar Fest. This year, jazz guitarist Mike Stern was the feature, featured musician. Stern made his deb debut in the 1980s, playing with Miles Davis, and has performed for audiences over the many years. This event also features guitarist Adam Schleckner and Jack Peterson. Stern closed the event by performing with faculty at the Kobacker Hall. This week's Tuesdays at the Gish fe featured two screenplays by Austin Windu and Loney Carrier. Reporter Kayla Ivory has the story. Tuesday at the Gish featured two screenplays by students Austin Windau and Lonnie Carrier. Both students shared their personal written plays with film students and the general public. 
Austin shared some details about this weekly event. So the Tuesdays at the Gish, they're, as you can tell, held every Tuesday. And they're here in the Gish Theater in the Union, room 206. Um, and it's just like a free space. Um, it's free to the public. You can just come in and watch like different films that are shown. And they're usually um, a wide variety of films. After the plays were read aloud by various students, the audience was allowed to ask questions and give feedback to the playwrights. Tuesdays at the Gish is open to the public in the new home of the Gish Film Theater, the Student Union. Attendees can watch movies here every week. The students prepared months in advance for this reading. Lonnie explained where he got inspiration for his play. I guess you could technically say it was loosely based on a true story, you know, because in a lot of ways it was based on my own experiences with my own life and dealing with parents that, you know, had their own issues, you know, on, on the, you know, the, with their own stuff. And me as a, as a child um, having to kind of adapt to learning how to take care of yourself. And Screenplays are only read once a semester for this event, although the films are weekly. Reporting from BG24 News, I'm Kalia Ivory. And now we go over to weather with Kendall Linden Kugel. Kendall? Thanks, Autumn. So today's actually been quite a gloomy day. We've got about a high of about 72 right now, but the clouds are going to taper off as we get later into the dinnertime hours. It has been quite breezy today. We've had a north-northeast wind of about 12 miles per hour, but those that's going to taper off as we get later into the evening tonight. If we take a look at tonight's forecast, we've got mostly clear skies when the clouds taper off. It's going to be a low of about 46, and the winds are going to die down just a little bit. We've got about 8 to 10 miles per hour. If we take a look at for the rest of the week, Tomorrow is going to be a little bit cooler. We have a high of about 66 and a slight chance of rain, maybe 30%. As we take a look at it in the weekend, it's going to be a, this chance of thunderstorms is going to skyrocket. We've got about 60% chance on Saturday. And if we take a look at to the rest of the week, it's actually going to feel a lot more like summertime with the second week of October as we have highs taping off into the high to mid 80s. And when we come back from break, we're going to have Leo with sports. We now go over to Leo Goldman for sports. Leo. Thanks, Autumn. The Falcons made their way down to Atlanta this past weekend to face the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, hoping to snag their first road win of 2018. The Falcons were looking for the upset as they entered the contest more than 28 point underdogs. 29 yard field goal by Nate Needham would put Bowling Green up 3 0 early, but after that, well, it was all Yellow Jackets from there. Georgia Tech scored on the ground with five different players. And in total, the Yellow Jackets amassed more than 500 yards of offense. Nearly 400 of that was on the ground. A couple of Falcons still had some standout performances, though. Quarterback Jared Dagey had a career-high 305 passing yards on the day. Scotty Miller breaks the 2,000 receiving yard mark for his career, just the 17th Falcon to do so. But at the end of the day, the final score would read 63-17 in favor of the Yellow Jackets. BG now drops to 1-4 on the year. This was the Falcons' third matchup against a Power 5 conference opponent this season, an unusually high number. BGSU football's sports information director, Jason Knavel, talked about why the Falcons' schedule had so many tough opponents. I don't know that it's necessarily the ideal situation. Um, you know, I think in general we're looking at uh, two Power 5 schools uh, on a regular basis uh, within the non-conference schedule. Uh, but the way this one worked out, being a two-for-one uh, situation, this was the year to, uh, to get Maryland on the schedule here at home. Um, and, uh, you know, we're excited about it. It's, it's, it's fun, as Coach would tell you. Uh, it's, a, it's a tremendous opportunity for the program uh, to, to get on a national stage and uh, provide them with some chances to, to pull off a big win. In other sports, the Falcons volleyball team had a terrific month of September. They were riding a seven-game win streak heading into Saturday's matchup against the Western, Western Michigan Broncos. The Falcons won over their previous three MAC opponents, but the match did not start out as the Falcons had hoped. The Broncos moved quickly, jumping out to a convincing two-set lead. Bowling Green clawed their way back, winning the third set before ultimately falling in the fourth. The Broncos nabbed their first MAC victory, while BGSU's win streak ends at seven. Falcons now fall to 9-8 and eight on the year and 3-1, and leading the MAC East Division. And that's all for sports. Autumn. No one knows if cows enjoy the music of Led Zeppelin, but hopefully they do. Because as reporter Aaron Kelly found out, it is blaring in a barn not far from here. 
30 minutes east of the Bowling Green campus, Justin Masseron is finishing up his daily chores yeah. on the family farm. With so many animals to tend to, the tasks seem to just keep on coming. So he keeps an eye out for something to giggle about. We, we, had, we, we had some paper name tags on the, uh, on the wall for the, for the names of the steers, but actually they, they ate the whole piece of paper in, the, in, their, in their stomach, and it's like candy. Besides the animals, Justin also hangs out with Ozzy and Axel Rose all day. But his rocker buddies don't just stay in the barn. Justin's dad built him a radio studio above the garage last year. It's one step closer to his dream of becoming a disc jockey. He's not on the radio yet, but he hosts an online show after he records his script and takes song requests. Rock and roll is, is the best, and rock and roll is, is uh, the, the biggest uh, whole entire thing I like because it's loud. And there's a lot, of, lot, of, lot of music I like about rock and roll, like 38 Special, uh, Ozzy Osbourne, Def Leppard, Rob Zombie, and Marilyn Manson. Hanging out in his studio, nice. I wonder how does he find anything in these movies wrapped in cords and recorded tapes in blank tapes? What if a listener requests Crazy Train? How does he find it? But it wasn't a worry for him. Somehow he knew which nook or cranny to search, especially for his favorite. So hold on, Lucy, and don't go away. <laughs> Although his whole day is monopolized, there's still one very special yeah. thing missing. Oh, yeah. I, I miss my mom. My mom, my mom Diane Masson, had passed away uh, since uh, um, September 25th. Uh, 2016, and uh, she was battling a heart failure and a uh, brain stroke. And I, and I play music for everybody in my Facebook page and play some music for dedication for my mom. Reporting for BG24 oh, News, right. I'm Erin Kelly. Thanks for joining us this week on BG24 News. I'm Autumn Stevens.